Well, how y'all doing today? Thanks for clicking on the video. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And don't play around with that like button. Make sure you hit me with one of those and also subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out with the algorithm of YouTube. So today's topic at hand is about an article from a Ubisoft executive by the name of Philippe Tremblay. And they basically say gamers should get comfortable with not owning their games anymore and that gamers are pretty willing to do that. I saw the article floating around Twitter. I didn't click on it. I didn't click on the headlines, but the homie cult classic cage made a video about it. I went and looked at it and I think it, you know, she brings up some valid points and this is a great cause of conversation that I think is pretty important about physical media, especially when it comes to video games. So let's jump right in, shall we? So as you can see, here's the article. I just picked it up on PC Gamers the website. And the headline is Ubisoft Director says gamers will will get more comfortable not owning games, and he's not wrong. And that is so concerning. With the amount of subscription-based services that are out there now you know xbox got one playstation got one ubisoft got one ea has one like there's so many i think uh rockstar has one for gta plus i believe um but there's just more and more are being put together by these companies and it's starting to become the norm you know what i mean and it's a bit concerning because physical media seems to be a thing of the past that uh, we as humans are trading for convenience. You know what I mean? That's why it's so nostalgic and you hear people talk about, oh, the midnight releases of video games. Oh, I can remember doing that. But at the time, it was a nightmare. You know what I mean? You're around people that you really don't, you know, vibe with. Some of them stank. You know what I mean? It was really inconvenient being out that late. And then you got home and you wanted to play the game super late and just lose sleep. And I get the inconvenience of that. And how digital media has become the thing, the main thing that people want. And it's all because of convenience. It's the same thing with movies and streaming services. You know, physical movies are pretty much a thing of the past. And I think that it needs to be an option always. And I believe that's what, <clears throat> what uh, Cassie said in her video as well. And I agree 100% it should always be an option it should never be snuffed out as an option. But let's go ahead and read some of this article here. A comment from Ubisoft Director of Subscriptions. So it's the Director of Subscriptions. Philippe Tremblay caused mild upset this week. Pirate everything from Ubisoft, one response demanded. But the hostile reaction might have more to do with general anxiety over the future of game ownership than his actual point, which didn't strike me as a surprise, as a surprising or untrue. In an interview with GamesIndustry.biz, Tremblay said that for video game subscription plans like Ubisoft Plus and Game Pass to expand, gamers will need to become more comfortable with not owning games, and he implied that this is likely to happen. Consumers got comfortable not owning their CD collection or DVD collection, said Tremblay. That's a transformation that's been a bit slower to happen in games. As gamers grow comfortable in that aspect, you don't lose your progress. If you resume your game at another time, your progress file is still there. What that has to do with anything, I don't know. That's that's. I think that bit there is a little uh, irrelevant at this point. That's not been deleted. You don't lose what you've built in the game or your engagement with the game. So it's about feeling comfortable with not owning your game. No, what it comes down to is the convenience. Like he said in the beginning... Consumers got comfortable not owning their CD collection or DVD collection, and it's slower with the video games because there's still a large majority of consumers who like and prefer to purchase or at least have the option to purchase physical media, you know, and for me, I was the same way. I conformed to the last generation, the PS4 and the and the Xbox One era. I conformed to the digital purchasing <clears throat> of my video games and took part in the ecosystem of 
these two consoles. And I got to look back at it and say, it's probably the most forgettable for me as far as experiencing great games, at least uh, up until like the end of that generation. But it's the same thing that happened with the CDs and the DVDs. People are comfortable right now not going into a store to buy a physical CD for their music. And why? It's because everything that's been put in place as far as technology and software, our devices, things have been put in place to make physical media like buying a CD for music inconvenient to the customer. Instead of it being an option, everyday life things in society now have conformed and changed to make physical media for CDs inconvenient. And the same thing can be said for DVDs or Blu-rays, not to that extent, because, you know, you still have your, your smart TVs that can stream, but you can also hook up your Blu-ray to it through HDMI, at least at this point in time. So it's not as much of an inconvenience, if that makes sense. But I mean, when you have your phone, your everyday device here, uh, that all of us cyborgs actually have, if I went and bought a CD, I can't play it on this. It's just inconvenient, but I can pull up Spotify or I can pull up, uh, I don't know, Apple Music or whatever, Pandora. And I have my, my music is right there at my fingertips. And that's the way the gaming industry, I believe, want the consumers to be. They want it to be where the hardware companies, you know, Sony and Microsoft and maybe not so much Nintendo, but definitely Microsoft. They're really wanting their consumer base to get comfortable and used to not buying physical media or at least looking at it as an inconvenience more than an option. You know what I mean? With the Xbox Series S, which I purchased, it's just a digital console. So anything I buy digitally, you know, it's great for. But I think as long as things, as long as they keep it as an option, then I wouldn't really have so much of an issue. But when they start to implement things that will cause inconvenience, to have physical media, that's when it's going to be a real, real, real big concern. Because as of right now, I play PC games, right? And it's very convenient for me. But I also play consoles. And with my consoles, I like to have that option with physical media. With this generation, the PS5 and the Xbox Series generation, I have basically found my, refound my love and my passion for physical media. And with the PlayStation 5, I'm really building up my library again because especially in this top point in time, how are we paying more for video games now and not having anything to really show for it other than a digital library? That, if you didn't know or you're not aware of, can be completely taken away if your account gets banned for whatever reason. Not only banned, it can be completely deleted as well. But let's let's move on. Let's continue this, this article here. Based on a negative response to that comment, which some framed as a demand from Ubisoft rather than an observation, we can safely guess that most gamers currently feel com very comfortable with the idea of not owning the games they play. I think we're probably all fatigued by subscriptions in general for games, movies, TV shows, music, which incentivize constant grazing, often remove stuff and are terrible value in cases where we just want perpetual access to a small collection of our favorite things. And yet, I can't claim that I haven't grown comfortable relying on streaming, streaming services like Netflix and Spotify over the past 15 years. Whatever my objections to them may be, physical media revivalists might prefer the word complacent, but the point stands. I don't see any reason to doubt that some larger portions of gamers will be comfortable with game library subscriptions in the future, likely including many of those who are growing up with Game Pass subs right now. Case in point, we already got used to not owning games once before, or at least those of us who remember buying games in physical stores did. The Steam subscriber agreement we've all agreed to states that if you break the rules, Valve can close your account, your Steam account, without refunding your purchases. And that's what it comes down to. That's I think we need to have legislation honestly put in place to protect 
something like this to where if, of course, if you're doing something very illegal or downloading games illegally, I think there should be more uh, restriction. But as far as the whole account being wiped, I think that's where things to need to really be reworked because you can put thousands thousands into your account and for something to happen what if someone just hacks your account and does some and breaks the rules or their tos and your account gets wiped out and you had nothing to do with it then what happens you're out of all of that money all that money that you spent on digital a digital library and you know it was all for what for nothing you got to really think about how important physical media is especially in this day and age that we live in. Think about all the books. Think about the Bible, not to get religious or anything, but had there not been people that had spoke up or made, made it important to not only them, but to other people to look at the bigger picture, to preserve these things, hell, we may not have had it. Ancient scriptures and things like that. We may not have had it. We went through a period and then I think it was the dark ages or something where there was like they were burning all kinds of books and knowledge like they were just keeping knowledge and physical stuff away from humans. You know what I mean? Not to go off on a tangent, but you, my point stands that I think there needs to be more people that stand up for physical media and have that having that as an option always and not being and not having things put in place in society that makes it inconvenient for physical media purchasers. Moving on, game ownership has always been diminished by the incre increasing dominance of live service games, which can be shut down, replaced, or just modified so much over time that the ship of thesis, it becomes debatable whether the original game still exists. Counter-Strike Global Offense was usurped by Counter-Strike 2 last year as just one example. And this is a great point. Look at Overwatch and Overwatch 2. You can't access Overwatch 1 anymore, even though it's, you, you know, you can argue that it's pretty much the same game. But the point remains that things like this can happen. Now, here's one thing that was said that it definitely seems like it's some backpedaling because uh, they realized, oh, snap, maybe I shouldn't have said that. The point is not to force customers down one route or another, Tremblay told Game Industry Biz. We offer purchase, we offer subscription, and it's the gamer's preference that is important here. That sounds like backpedaling to me when you come out and say something like, gamers should get comfortable basically with not owning their shit. That's, you know, that's, that's a really hard backpedal right there. But games like this, like Baldur's Gate 3, they don't have a physical release at the moment, even though they're getting one. I know that, and I'll probably end up purchasing it physical. But at the moment, Baldur's Gate 3 launched with no physical. Alan Wake 2 has no physical option, and I don't think there is one in the future. I could be wrong, but I haven't seen anything yet about it having a physical release. But as of right now, it has no physical release, and it was very, very popular amongst gamers. They were very comfortable with doing, you know, with, with buying the game digitally only so things like that but i'm things like that are <clears throat> steps in the wrong direction in my opinion but like i said earlier in the video i think if things aren't put in place to inconvenience the physical media purchaser then you know i'm i, I don't cool if people would prefer to buy their shit digital I just don't want things to be put in place to where I can't buy a physical game or it's more inconvenient. Case in point, the cell phone. Uh, another case in point is the Series S. If that was the only option that Xbox has, I, Xbox had, I would have I would have stopped buying their consoles altogether. You know, it is what it is. I plan on getting the Series X, but at this moment, I there's no real pressure for me to do so because I do have digital a digital library through the xbox ecosystem and i think honestly that's what the big picture for microsoft was back when the xbox one first launched i think with the disaster of it coming out the gate with you know uh, them wanting to do away with used physical games i think that was the plan all along is to really implement something that is going to 
convince consumers to build a digital library with their within their ecosystem, at least at the end of the Xbox One or towards the end of the Xbox One uh, lifespan, I guess you could say, or generation, they really started to push the Game Pass uh, service, and it's pretty much a standard now with Xbox. And I think that was the whole idea. This is just me speculating, but I think that's the whole idea with Xbox because they know the hardware sells. They're not going to be able to even come close to what Nintendo or Sony's doing at the moment, even with a very powerful uh, console like the Series X. They're just too far behind. Last generation, they lost so hard that it's almost impossible to really come back and compete with console hardware sales. And that's why you have Game Pass as a service on PC as well. That's why you have their games pretty much going everywhere aside from the other consoles at this moment. But I think that's what the whole point of it is. That's the whole point of Game Pass is to get you into their ecosystem, give, get the good games, get good games on there. And that's arguable. You can have your own opinion about whether it offers that or not. But get the games on there that people want to buy. And then that's why they leave. That's the strategy. That's why games come and go. Because they get you in. They get you to play. And then once it starts to go, it's to convince you to buy it digitally in their ecosystem. That's why you, when you have Game Pass Ultimate, you get discounts. So they offer the discounts on games. Oh, you pay this amount because you're a Game Pass member. That's the whole point. This isn't like rocket science. It's marketing. It's really good marketing because it's working for them. But that's really all I have for you in this video. You let me know if this is something that concerns you. You let me know your thoughts about this, whether we should continue to go down the convenient route and allow these companies to put things in place that inconvenient the physical media collector or if you would just rather buy digital or whether you don't give a shit about it at all, you let me know down there in the comment sections. Do all those things down there. And again, like I said in the beginning of the video, make sure you drop a like on it. And if you like my content, make sure you subscribe. And as always, it's been your boy's been real and I'm out. Later. Down when there's no growth and it's so gross. Shook like a snow globe. Reading upon the pole.